we're out today. This is a pool harbour. We're out on Mistress Linda today with some guys from the Angling Trust, Martin Salter and John Chain, to name but two. The skipper of Mistress Linda, of course, is uh, Phil Higgins, who's chairman of the Professional Boatman's Association. And uh, it's a really lovely place, pool, to go fishing. Uh, We'll be fishing some of the potentially designated marine conservation zones during the day, so it's going to be interesting too. Excellent, looking forward to it. Should be good. We're catching play some bass, I believe. Hopefully, a turbot. Pool is one of my favourite ports to fish from. There's a huge variety of fish available, and uh, it really makes it a go to venue for, for species hunters from all over the UK. You can target bream, rays, place, turbot, sharks, bass, tope. There is, of course, the added bonus. Because of the vast inland sea inside the harbour around Brown Sea Island, you can fish in just about any weather, which, of course, makes it a great venue for competitions too. We had two targets for the day, place and bass. Uh, apparently, none of the anglers on board had caught place, apart from myself, of course. So, unfortunately, I was the designated expert in catching these feisty little flatfish. Uh, a bit of an ominous sign, as it turned out. Now, we left at 8.30 and headed out into the bay to start on the place. Uh, a task which actually proved quite difficult throughout the day, as it turned out. Uh, Phil took us to a number of the local place marks, uh, and although things started out pretty well, when he caught the first one very quickly, uh, we did become plagued with small bream, which uh, drove us further out to try various different spots. Now, there were a number of other charter and private boats uh, out on the water fishing that day. I suppose predictable because it was beautiful. We had gurnards, bream and all sorts of fish. Judging by the reports coming in from those other boats, uh, they weren't doing terribly well either. Even when the tides and the bait and the weather all work together, there's never a guarantee you're going to catch fish, however experienced you are. I suppose it's the beauty of angling. Uh, we wouldn't do it if it was easy, would we? We were fishing with light rods and reels. Uh, some of them supplied by Phil, and the rigs we used were simple, single hook rigs really, tied with a string of yellow and green beads set on a zip slider. Uh, Phil told us he'd experimented extensively with the colour combinations and found that they were by far the best. Uh, this combo, of course, also works very well for place where I fish regularly. Interestingly, being a regular place angler, I was expected to do well. Uh, it didn't work as well as you might think. Anyway, all the anglers caught a place or two, albeit small specimens, uh, except yours truly. I did catch a number of species, including a surprise red mullet, which is a first for me. And although we did catch quite a few places in the end, uh, there were no really big ones. But all the anglers went home happy that they'd broken their duck. When the tide began to strengthen, we steamed out to a mark about two thirds of the way to the needles to have a go for some bass. Uh, the area is widely fished, of course, but this was a bank that Phil had discovered uh, and he thought it occasionally held really good numbers of bass. So we changed gears uh, and we're using lures, fish minnows actually. These lures were dropped to the bottom, wound up five or ten turns, retrieving slowly, and then dropped back down again and so on. And Phil's instructions were very specific. Keep close to the bottom uh, and I'll tell you when the fish are showing on the sounder and then you reel. So I dropped down, waited until he gave the signal and then slowly wound in. And then first drop, bang. Uh, I and at least two other anglers were in straight away. The fish were there. They were averaging, well, between two and four pounds, I guess. And from then on, every time we drifted over the bank, uh, at least two and sometimes all of us got hit. Very few takes were missed, or interestingly, and the fish were obviously feeding hard on sand eels or something similar over these banks. In the end, we boated about 30 bass between the four of us, and I made up for my place blank. I actually lost count of the number of fish I boated, although I don't think it was more than about 10. Only two were taken for the table, and the rest all went back to grow a little bit bigger. Now, one thing I did do while we were drifting over this mark was to have a look at the area using Navionics' new mapping chart, sonar chart shading, and it did prove quite illuminating. Although, of course, you could clearly see the area on the 2D chart, when you put the shading on, it brought the area into sharp relief, and you could see clearly why the fish were there. It was an underwater ridge, uh, and the fish seemed to be concentrated on the western end, shoaling in the tide, with the current moving over their heads as they faced into it. They were concentrated into a very small area around the mark, and, of course, as soon as we drifted away from it, the hit stopped. So it was a successful trip in beautiful weather, and at all times, 
uh, we were in the shadow of these towering cruise ships which had been parked in the bay, left to rest with a skeleton crew and their engines on, thrumming away in the sunshine. It was a great day out, uh, it really was, uh, and uh, many thanks to Phil Higgins who uh, skippered the boat and put us on the fish.